the Birth Bootcamp Podcast. I'm Holly Hopley, the CEO. I'm Cheryl Ameling, the Certification Coordinator. I'm Liana Wolf, the Administrator. And I'm Megan Busk, the um, Head of Marketing. And today I'm excited for this for this episode. We are going to be talking about our experience at DoulaCon. We went there in September. It was like the end of September in Denver. Um, it was really fun because it was the first time since bringing Liana and Megan on that we were all together, the four of us. So we just had a lot of fun hanging out, um, getting to know each other, but also working really hard at the same time. So mm-hmm. it was a lot of fun. Um, So we just thought we would share our experience and um, what we loved about it and things we learned and um, all the things that we could talk about probably all day. So um, first, I kind of want everybody to share just like in general, their overall, like, what did they love about being at DoulaCon? Um, And I'll go first just to be nice. So um, my, I think my favorite thing was just being in a room with a whole bunch of other people that are just as passionate about the things that I'm passionate about as well. Um, I think that, I think sometimes this work can be isolating and we feel like, you know, we kind of get to that point where we're like, am I making a difference? Like, is what I'm doing important? And then you go to an event like this and you, it kind of like re like lights your fire and, helps you you know remember why you got into this work and that kind of stuff so that it was just good to rub shoulders with lots of other birth professionals and so that was mine what about you Cheryl well you stole mine oh well (laughs) same yeah so um yeah I loved I love being in that birth bubble in that birth space um that um I think that I haven't really been in as a participant in a long time because, you know, like I've, we've taught trainings and we've done retreat. And so like we've facilitated that bubble, but we haven't been like part of the bubble, like, like just somebody who gets to consume all the things. And, and so that was really, really fun to be like, like, even though we had a tape, we were a vendor and we were a speaker, like we had responsibilities in it it was really nice to just kind of sit back make a plan of I'm gonna go to this this presentation I'm gonna go to that one you know let's meet up with this person whatever um but just to just to participate in it was really fun and I loved just like the overall um like like the validation that is that was just I don't know like this blanket of like, thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you for coming. And, you know, like, like when we would share something, it would be um, like, it was just, it was a very vulnerable space a lot. And it felt very, um, uh, very welcoming to like all of our ideas and all of our thoughts. And, and I think sometimes it just in the world, we don't get to experience that enough. And so it was really, it was just, it was lovely to be in space with, like you said, Holly, like people that are passionate about the same things that we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That, um, the word safe comes to mind with what you were talking about, Cheryl. Like I thought the same thing safe and with the knowledge that your opinion would be like valued here, even if it was disagreed with, like just, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. exactly what I meant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that word popped into my head when you were talking. Because yeah, like everybody felt like they were important and their opinion was important. And yeah, exactly. And the yeah. snaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was all so good. Um, I, I mean, Holly, you also took mine. I feel like that was probably all of ours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um. I loved the networking part. Um, and I know that's, that's the extrovert in me. I was just, I was so happy to go and meet people and I'm not shy about being the one to introduce myself to people. And so I really enjoyed that. And again, that, that safety was there. I knew that I would be welcomed Mm -hmm. and what I had to say would be welcomed. And sometimes I don't feel that in other 
like for other mom groups and it's like hey i i'm kind of the resident expert so to speak like i'm not a midwife there's definitely things that i don't know but sometimes it's hard to bring I mean, my experience and my knowledge into a general mom group and to not have them be like, well, who are you? And just knowing that I could just come and be like, this is what I think about this. Um, and they'd be like, yes, or actually, I don't know that I agree with that, but it was still welcoming. And I just loved all those connections mm -hmm. um, with all the people. Yeah. 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 I mean, we've still been connecting with people that we met there, like, and it's been, you know, it's been a month now. Um, mm -hmm. and we're still kind of making those connections. So yeah, I loved that. Yeah, me too. What about you, Megan? Um, yeah, you took mine as well, but I <laughs> feel like, um, for me, because I am one of the, like, I, uh, haven't been in the birth community or the birth world for very long. It was really great to be able to just go and learn from so many people, um, so I loved that and loved being able to just, like you guys have been talking about, like sit down and talk with people and listen to their presentations and just learn so much from so many different people. And what was so great is even just walking in, like so many people from so many different walks of life, from different corners of the nation, from, you know, doing different things in the birth world. So it was just really neat to see that no matter who you are, there's someone who can support you throughout your process and they're going to be the like mindset and they're going to be there for you every step of the way. So I love that. Like there's just not one cookie cutter example of like a doula or a nurse practitioner or, a, you know, a childbirth educator. There are so many different people that can help and support you. So it was really neat to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. Like it was, it was really interesting just like watching the people come in the door and check in and, and like, so like you said, so many different types of people, definitely not cookie cutter in the birth world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I loved that. Like there were people who like, well, they, they, they came and they were like, well, I'm thinking about becoming a doula. So they weren't even yeah. like, they hadn't even like gone to a training or anything yet. And then there were people who've been doing this work for a long time um, and yeah, people who served certain communities, you know, when they're, they're experts in helping that, like, I just think it's great that, like you said, yeah, it's like so vast. Um, and I think we often do get stuck in like, this is what this should be, but it's, it's not like, there are so many different, different ways you can do things. That's one thing I've always loved about this, about this work is like an individual can take it and do what they want with it. Mm -hmm. um yeah you know so it was really interesting like going to the different presentations because I think like for us we like our big focus is education like that's obviously a big part of what we do and we're passionate about that and it was interesting seeing the passion that is in birth like birth is the whole but the different pieces of it so you know there was the education there was the pelvic floor therapy there was the um you know, the marketing, like everybody had a, a little, a little thing that they were passionate about that then when you bring it all together, we help each other grow. And, and so that was, that was, I loved like being part of that and hearing, seeing the passion in different areas of birth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I loved it that they, that they brought in speakers too, that there were like, there was something for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like no matter where you were at on your, you know, journey as a birth professional, there were speakers there that like, there were so many different topics that like everybody could take something and find something that was interesting to them that they wanted to go learn about. Yeah. So well, it was yeah. just hard to pick which one you were going to go to. Oh, it, it yeah, was. There was a lot, a lot to choose from. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, and I'm, we were, I think we were kind of lucky because we had the four of us, we were kind of like, okay, you go here and you take notes and come back and tell us about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and we were able to kind of divide and conquer that way. But, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, we did. We, I think we all left with like little pieces of like little nuggets and little, like, you know, oh, I really needed to hear that. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, and if, and if you've never heard of DulaCon before, look them up. Um, but it was two days. I don't remember the exact days, but it was two days, um, from 
what was it? Nine to six, I think. Um, and it was just like, we were listening, we had speakers in the morning and then lunch and speakers in the afternoon. So it was just like two days of like, yeah, just like kind of being soaked in all of this birth, like all the stuff. Um, and it was really, it was really good. I didn't really know what my, like, I don't know that I really had expectations when we went into it and we decided to go to this. Um, but whatever they were, they were fully met and exceeded. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it's good. But yeah. <laughs> so I thought maybe each of us, um, maybe would just share, um, maybe some of the presentations we went to, maybe, um, some of the things that we learned or took away or anything like that. <laughs> I don't know that I have like one right off the top of my head. Um, I'm trying to think. I did go sit in. There was one they had like a, um, oh, like a panel. I was like, what's the word? Like a panel of people that talked about Medicaid reimbursement um, for doulas. And they were specifically talking about, about Col um, in Colorado. But it's interesting now as Utah has insurance that's starting to reimburse doulas and and kind of that whole process. That was kind of interesting to just kind of hear about how that happens. <laughs> um, and I think, I don't know, maybe Liana, since you live there, I don't know if you have any other insights, but I think what Colorado is doing is cool because they're looking at other states who have done this already um, and kind of like learning from their mistakes and like, so that it's kind of not a mess in the beginning, which I think is kind of cool. Um, yeah, um, it was a really long one. Like it was one, one was of long seminars. Um, so I actually had to take a break halfway mm -hmm. through just cause I, it was the afternoon. I was yeah. tired. <laughs> yep. Um, but one of the things that they talked about, um, they, they touched on a couple of the other States. Um, I guess Texas has Medicaid reimbursement for postpartum support. Oh, um, okay. I don't know if you knew that Cheryl. Um, yeah. And they, they just kind of like threw it out there. Oh yeah. Over in Texas. And I was like, Texas, <laughs> that's not, that's not oh, that's the first state I would have thought of mm -hmm. to have like reimbursement for postpartum care. Um, and I don't know the details, um, of what went into that, um, and what it actually covers. Um, but it was just interesting when they would throw information out that, um, it was just kind of surprising some of the things. Um, one of the things I did ask the panel at the end was if they had addressed the idea of having Medicaid reimbursement for childbirth education and they had no idea. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm glad I put that bug in your Yeah. Ear. I love that you mm -hmm. brought that up. Because I mean, there was no, no mention of it over the two hours. And I was like, has there been any discussion? Cause I'm like, maybe they did talk about it and decided that doing the doula part would be more important first. And it was on the list. I don't know. Um, but they were like, no, no, we mm -hmm. hadn't, we hadn't thought about it or even looked into it, but they did say that they did have um, additional funds in the program that they were like, maybe that's something that we can put that towards um, looking into. And because I mentioned in our line of work in birth boot camp, um, as childbirth educators, we see that people have better outcomes. Like their, their perception of their birth is much more positive. So regardless of if they do end up with a C-section or any of those interventions, they have so much more confidence because of the education they've had, whether they had a doula or not. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just like, I really hope they, somebody, I hope one of them wrote it down. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know. I hope that they like have a discussion yeah. about that or something. Yeah. 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 One thing that um, I thought was super interesting is that there were three male doulas there which was really cool I haven't seen or met a male doula before so that was kind of fun to kind of get their perspective and two of them actually had presentations and I I went to both of them um and it was fun to be able to hear from them and kind of things that they 
the tools that they utilize where I feel like they're more coming from like the partner perspective. Like these are how you can help um, a partner in the birth space. And so I, I loved kind of hearing some of their um, their tips. One of the ones that like resonated with me and I just remember is um, they, there was a doula couple and um, the husband, he mentioned that like if your your partner is in labor and they are kind of getting in their head and things are, you know, escalating and they're having a hard time to just sit down with them and look them in the eye and say their name and say, I am here for you. Like this is a safe space and just kind of ground them a little bit. And I was like, that is such a great tool for doulas to to just tell, you know, the birth partner, this is something that probably is a good idea to do right now (laughs) Mm because mom is getting a little bit overwhelmed. So um, as your partner, you need to have somebody just to like ground you sometimes and just remind them like, it's okay. You're safe. Mm -hmm. You're, you can do this. Like we're going to carry on with our birth plan. And so I just, I liked that tip. I thought that was a really good one. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I I think that's a good tip for life. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. I need that nearly every day. So (laughs) yeah, exactly. Yeah. And all three of those male doulas were in your presentation. Mm -hmm. Uh All yeah, three. I was pretty surprised by that. I was like, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like that. I wonder that. if it was the whole like birth boot camp. And it oh, I didn't even think about, thought about that. Because yeah. It, I mean, I remember that that was one of the reasons that mm-hmm. Donna chose that name was to appeal to male partners. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a, a childbirth education that isn't all flowers and cursive and pretty things, but a little more gritty because because birth is not always pretty Mm -hmm. um and so usually isn't pretty so it um I wonder if that's what drew them in I mean I hope the the topic drew them in you know the importance of childbirth education Mm -hmm. um yeah but yeah it was just but it might have piqued their interest like like oh that's an interesting name yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that I think that's I like that because I was I was actually honestly really curious. I was like, all three of them came to ours. I was, <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just you know, like if one had come or two, you know, I'm like, oh, that's nice. But like, yeah, all three of them. You know so, what? And all three of them had like input and like yeah. like participated in our presentation too. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and one of them even knew like so like we gave a little quiz at the beginning of our thing with just like statistics about birth. And one of them even like he got a lot of them right. I was like, mm-hmm. wow. I was yeah, impressed. Was and they were tough. They were mm-hmm. some tough questions. That was not so. an easy quiz. <laughs> it wasn't an easy yeah. quiz. Yeah. We did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was um that was dad to doodla. Um mm-hmm. yeah. Her- Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It was fun. Do we want to talk about our presentation right now? <clears throat> or do we want to circle back to it? Because let's circle back. It, we haven't... Okay. We'll uh, circle back. Let's circle back. Let's keep talking about like all the other things and presentations that we enjoyed and things we learned. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure we like, left the audience <laughs> with like no idea what we talked about. So right. <laughs> it's a mystery. You have to stick around. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um I so the first one I think Megan and I went to was about like traumatic birth and that one was it was really good it 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 hit in a lot of different ways like Mm -hmm. I I was um lucky enough to not have traumatic births but the way that she presented it and and just that you know it's, I, I think one thing that I find really interesting is like, when we talk about birth, we're talking about like very specific, like a very specific thing that happened, but, but there are also, you know, there are ways that these topics really um, go outside of birth. They like go into life. <laughs> like we've all experienced traumatic things, you know? And so um, just hearing her talk about her, um, her experience and the way that she felt very out of control, like her experience, her birth experience was good until she didn't feel heard anymore and she didn't feel seen anymore. And she didn't feel part of the decision-making process anymore and, and how that affected her and how that affected her postpartum. And it was really good to hear, 
um, her perspective, but then also like ways that as birth professionals, we can move forward um, in, in um, hopefully reducing birth trauma. Um, but it really like, like it kind of hit me, like it was, it was a hard one to listen to the very, very beginning. Cause I think it, I carried that into other, um, like the other presentations that I, that I went into just kind of that, like, oh, this is heavy. Like this is mm-hmm. a, this is a lot of stuff that women that, you know, that people deal with, um, in birth, but then also in life. So, um, I really, I really, really enjoyed hers. Yeah, it was really good, but, um, yeah, just being able to recognize like how to help somebody who has gone through trauma and just even on the other end, she didn't talk much about childbirth education, but for our purpose, like our passion about childbirth education, that's a huge aspect of it. Um, just being able to make sure that you're educated enough to be able to stand up for yourself and to be able to know what's going on, um, I think is, is important to note as well. But yeah, it was, it was a really good one. Um, I'm trying to remember some of the things that kind of stood out to me on that one. Um, one thing she did talk about was just being able to, to, um, identify what coping techniques, and like ways that you can relax and things like that after, if you've had, if you've experienced trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like that too. Like she talked about, um, like us taking care of ourselves as birth workers and, you know, and that like, like, we don't have to try to fix it for them either. You know, like we can, we can just listen and we can validate. And then we also have to take care of ourselves in knowing our limits and knowing, um, how to like, how to take care of ourselves after, after experiencing somebody's traumatic birth or helping somebody through it. Um, so yeah, she was, she was really good. Yeah. I don't have her name right off here. I should have, I should have had that. That would have been a great idea. Mm. Yeah. I didn't write down names or anything like that either. either. Yeah. Um, I really want, I went to one about, um, postpartum depletion that was really good um and I always found it interesting I never really thought about it this much until hearing her talk about it but like you know we have our our six week you know postpartum visit and usually they are very short usually it's like okay you healed you know maybe they'll check your stitches um if you request them to like but they don't do any blood work you know, you're lucky if they ask you how they feel. And, and so she talked about some of the, some of the blood tests and stuff that she does for her patients when they come and they are feeling like crap and their bodies are just like completely depleted of all of some of the most essential, like nutrients and minerals and vitamins and things like that. And I'm just like, I'm like, how do we get our system to do better by these, you know, especially so early postpartum, And yeah, I'm like, and we expect them to feed their baby, you know, (laughs) like take care of you, take care of a baby, feed your baby, keep this baby alive. Um, While you're so depleted. Right. While you're Mm -hmm. so depleted. Yeah. 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 Like, and we're not going to really help you. We're not going to help you at all. I'm not going to give you any tools. Yeah. Yeah. And And I think something is as simple as like doing a little bit of blood work Mm -hmm. and starting with some basic like vitamins. Like, Mm -hmm. and I know some people like don't care for vitamins and they're like, oh, we can get everything from our food. But like in the standard American diet, you're not getting all of the things that you need um, from the food that you eat. So, well, and we're not even like setting, like we don't even have the communities that would provide the nourishing food that, Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're like grabbing a ham sandwich and some lasagna that, you know, the neighbor brought over (laughs) Mm -hmm. and, you know, so like. Like, even if we could get everything we need from our food, we're not even set up to, mm-hmm, to for do that, that to even be a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So absolutely. One thing yep. I thought was interesting is that she talked about um, that it can last for up to 10 years. So if you are going through postpartum period, that's like a 10 year period of time that your mm-hmm. body is trying to recover from yeah having a baby growing a baby giving birth breastfeeding all those things 
And that was wild to me because I'm like, yeah. no, people don't know this. You know what I mean? Like, it, this is not common knowledge. People think you have a baby, you breastfeed after a year, you're done, and then your life goes on. But like that stays with you for a long time. Mm-hmm. So I thought that yeah, was a really I, interesting thing. I think it was like just the week before we went to do Lacan. I had read an article about a doctor who was like, who was saying, he's like, no, he's like, this is 10 years. And so when she quoted that, I was like, I just read that. Like, yeah. and I know we've heard lots of things, like we've heard lots of numbers. Like we all talk about how it's more than just six weeks. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's definitely that first year. I've even heard lots of people talk about the first two years, but that was the first time I'd heard 10 years. Um, I mean, and I totally mm-hmm. believe it. I always no, say yeah, I'm seven absolutely. years postpartum and yeah, I'm not mm-hmm. kidding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to take in cons- into consideration, like people the vast majority of people don't wait 10 years to have another baby. Right. Yeah. And so does that compound over the years? Like yeah. I literally was pregnant or nursing for 10 years. So then you got 10 yeah. more to go until so you're I'm like, where <laughs> does the clock start on that 10 year? <laughs> yeah. I think it yeah. starts when you have, I think it's when you have that last one. Cause then you got mm-hmm. 10 years, like, cause yeah, well, same thing. Like I was, yeah, pregnant and nursing a baby for yeah, almost ten years, eleven years, mm-hmm. yeah. and yeah. yeah. So same. That's and nuts. it's wild to like hear all of her like all the things that she was talking about were that were like this is um these are the symptoms of of postnatal depletion, and I was like, oh my gosh, like yes, I feel yeah. that, mm-hmm. like I. I can check off all, you know, mm-hmm. 70% of those, if not more. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's interesting to just be able to see it firsthand and be like, oh, that's what's wrong with me, you know? And if we in our system had, like Holly was saying, if we took better care of our mothers after they have babies, like they wouldn't be seven years down the road and be like, what is wrong with me? Because they would have had the help right away and been mm-hmm. able to figure out what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, this, I mean, that ties into what Dr. Patel was saying. She was one of our keynote speakers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was talking about that hormone drop that happens. Mm -hmm. And you know, what was the question she asked? When is like the biggest hormone drop Uh after you, like after you've had a baby and it was literally immediately after you have Mm -hmm. pushed out a baby, that chart for your progesterone just tanks and so you add that to the nutritional deficiencies that you have from, you know, the placenta, just, I don't want to say like yep. taking all of you, to, but <laughs> it's making sure that your baby is provided for. And yeah, mm-hmm. that all like links together. And it's no wonder postpartum mood disorders are mm-hmm. such a huge mm-hmm. problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And then again, the lack of support. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I was going to say like her whole thing, like Dr. Patel, like her whole thing in the fourth trimester. um, And, and I love like what she's talking about, like on her Instagram and stuff about how important um, I forget what she calls it, but she talks a lot about how, like, you know, in our system, we have the pediatrician for the baby and we have, you know, your OB for the mom and their care is separate. Whereas we really should be, it should be together. Um, And it brought me back to um, our retreat that we had last when um, Deborah Pascali Bonero was talking about that mother baby and she was like, they should not be separated. So like to her, it's one word, it's mother baby, it's one word. (laughs) And and I was like, oh my gosh, like we really should like, um, their care should be together. Right. Mm -hmm. And, And I loved how like she talked about how they're doing like home visits um, and I'm like, man, it would take so much work to get that to happen in all states, you know, in all 50 states. Yeah. Um, well, and that's kind of how it is in the midwifery model of care. Is right. Like, mm-hmm. like mom and home, baby home visits, are, yeah. are together and they are looked mm-hmm. at together and you're, you're considered together. It's mm-hmm. not, it's not separate, but yeah. yeah but then I remember because I only had midwifery care. So I remember when I first heard that mom wasn't seen until six weeks I about had a heart attack. I was like, <laughs> like, there's so much that can happen mm-hmm. in that six weeks. And I, yeah. you know, I was always so well cared for and, and looked after. And, and so to think that 
women aren't like it's mm-hmm. just horrifying mm-hmm. it's horrifying mm-hmm. yeah so yeah I, I feel hope- like oh go ahead sorry no 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 go um I I feel like for so for my first birth my I had a midwife but I was in a small town and we didn't have like a pediatrician so that mother baby care was like really present and that is like how I just thought things were so like when I went to and she was a CNM so she delivered I delivered at the hospital so she didn't like do home visits or anything but after like my postpartum stuff was all together um, and then that didn't happen like with my next babies. And I was like, Hmm, this is interesting. But what I do find also interesting is that going from like my second baby to my third baby, um, when I went to my, what is it like two days after you go to the doctor for your baby, mm-hmm. um, my, the pediatrician gave me like a postpartum depression, little checklist. Little mm-hmm. So I feel like they know that something needs to change. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Yep. I feel like there's like something in there that they're like, oh, well, let's hand this to the mom because something needs to change, but it's not yeah. a good change. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know it's I mean? not enough. It's not, it's not enough. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And- Utah has our rates, our postpartum mood disorder rates are really high here. And mm-hmm. so they've, they've started doing that. They've had the pediatrician start giving out the, uh, oh, what's the name of that questionnaire? I know. I can't remember. It's I in our, it's other, even, in, it's whatever. in our materials and I can't even think yeah. of it. Is it the, <laughs> like, like, y'all, y'all know what I'm talking something about. Something like that? Yeah. Um, something like, yeah. Something like that. But yeah, um, it is. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's like, they know that there's a problem, but. Mm-hmm. Then, then you have to wonder like, okay, but a pediatrician, like what, I mean, how well equipped are they to actually like you give them, the, you know, they're given this exactly. template, but like, what do mm-hmm. I do with that? And as, yeah. is the pediatrician going to, help me with right. so it doesn't actually <laughs> they're they're gonna anything. say they're gonna say you should go talk to your provider mm-hmm. yeah go talk right. to your ob <laughs> even though yeah. they don't know who your provider is or if they're mm-hmm. any good at it so i went from my first was a hospital birth with an ob and we took a non-birth boot camp birth class beforehand I, I, I knew nothing about midwifery care. The, like they did not discuss the midwifery model of care at all. And so I was just like, oh, okay. I go in at six weeks and I just thought that's the way it was. Then I had two home births and I was like in the, in the interview for my midwife, for my second kiddo, um, I remember her saying like, yeah, I'll come visit you at you know, 48 hours postpartum and then two weeks and then four weeks and then six weeks. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? You're going to come to me. And she's like, at least for those first two. Yeah. If you feel up to getting out of the house for, you know, four and six weeks, then sure you can come to me. Um, but I would, it was so foreign to me. And, and then I was like, why, why is this not a thing? Right. Mm-hmm. Why, why is it not a thing? Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. with my Soro babes, I had midwifery care in a hospital. And while the, the prenatal appointments were so much better than my OB appointments, um, they were much more in line with my home birth midwife appointments. Um, it was still like, okay, we'll see you in six weeks, Mm -hmm. except I did, except I do have her phone number. And she was like, contact me anytime. Like, you don't have to call the office. You can contact me directly. If, if you need something, or if you don't feel right, like make sure you're reaching out to me, but it's still not the same as Mm -hmm. having a person coming to you and checking on you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, yeah, she was the, good. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the ones that I went to was on mental health. So since we're, since we're talking about that, um, and, and it, it was really good. She, she talked about like medications and when, when medications can be helpful. Um, she talked about a lot of myths, you know, like, like that there's a best medication for, um, uh, you know, for a mom to be on, um, and there's really not like, it's all risks and benefits. And, and she, she talked about like, like women speaking up and, um, you know, and if you, if you 
feel like you have a problem or if you feel like, you know, cause everybody, a lot of times I think it's like, well, get more sunshine, eat better, da, 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 da. you know? And I feel like a lot of times, like by the time we have, we're saying I need help. We've done all of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we've, we've tried all of those things and, um, you know, and that there is a time and a place for medication, but understanding, um, like the reality of that and what that really looks like and not, um, not making assumptions about what is, what is best or what is good or what is safe or what isn't. And, Mm -hmm. um, and having a knowledgeable care provider that, that can help you like kind of navigate that. Um, she also talked about like one of the myths that partners cannot develop postpartum depression and, and, um, and, and this was like new, I mean, it wasn't new information to me here at, at Dulacan. I had known about it before, but, but it's, it's not talked about, you know, and, mm-hmm. um, yeah. and I think, you know, having that, um, you know, guys are supposed to be tough and be there and be strong blah, 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 blah. and they're also going through all of this and in a different way, but, but they are also like their experience should be acknowledged also. And, and the things that can happen postpartum should also be acknowledged, um, for them. So it was, it was a really good, um, um, like good presentation, just, you know, kind of like covering the basis of like mental health and medication and when it's appropriate, when it's not and and stuff like that. So, um, I, I think, I think it was, I think it was really good to, to hear, um, somebody who's like, no, this can actually be helpful. It's not always bad. And I think sometimes there's like that stigma, you know, like, oh, mm-hmm. medication's bad. And it's not always. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That whole American, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And exactly. Like, it's not just pointed at men either. It's pointed at women. Of right. what, you know, And I feel like we're just leaving starting to leave that whole idea of therapy or counseling being taboo like Mm, yeah it's not you're going to therapy what's wrong with you like I'm so glad that we're leaving that and starting to recognize that in reality everybody needs to talk to somebody right about what they're going through you know and having professionals who can do that is good right it's a Mm -hmm. good thing and Yeah, I hope we get to the point where in the postpartum realm, that fourth trimester realm, where it is not only like accepted, but that it's encouraged. Because I think even moms who just get, you know, the baby blues, but they're still going to feel better if they if they go talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Revamping the whole fourth trimester in the U.S. maternal care system. Yeah, would be amazing. Oh, yep. Yeah, one that yeah, actually works. works to do. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. What else? What else did y'all see or go to? I think we've kind of covered some of the big ones. I know I'm yeah, like, what yeah. are some of the other really good ones? But I can't yeah. think of them off the top of my head. Oh, I went to, I went to one. Go. Don't remember her name off the top of my head and I feel bad I have her card on my desk um but she has a um a group in a collective kind of in I think Michigan and but it's not just doulas it is a whole care spectrum for moms and it's just like hey we're a resource for you to connect you to these people um but she had a really great um form that she passed out that I think would be really great for us to kind of make our own. And because we talk in our doula training and in our childbirth ed training about getting a list of resources for your area. Mm-hmm. And that's, um, I don't know if it's still a part of the pre. Mm-hmm. It is. We, yeah. It is. Okay. Yep. Um, but I remember doing that and being like, I don't even know who like what are my resources um like I didn't even know the topics Mm -hmm. and so she had this whole list of all like a really long list too yeah Um, I still got the list right here on my table (laughs) I grabbed extras for you guys Mm -hmm. um so that we can be like 
hey, here's a great template for you to start with. Here are mm-hmm. the kind of providers that you need to look for. And whether you connect personally with them or not, if you know that they're a good referral, have them on your list, have their contact information on yep. your list. And just the importance of having those for your clients. And I was like, oh, that's so smart. Um, my resource list, I don't think I've updated it like the actual list. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've updated it since I trained. Yeah. Um, I just kind of am like, Oh, these are the emails that I have of the people that I refer to, but I don't, I don't keep that hard copy anymore. And I really need to have it so I can give it to my clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I think a lot of people like they make that first list, but yeah, I think a lot of them will be right there with you. I haven't updated that in forever. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. You also kind of learn your go-to's. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's true. Which is true. But I but I also think that because we just have our go-tos, we forget to always be searching out new people because there's always new people coming mm-hmm. into the community or we forget to yep. birth work or, you know, offering new services. So it is so important to be updating that even though you have your go-tos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Another one we haven't discussed um, was the other keynote speaker, which is Doc and Dula. Oh, yeah. oh yes. And that was uh, a great presentation. He just, uh, he's an OB mm-hmm. and he, um, he has just uh, have formed a network of like-minded OBs and doulas that are there to support um, support women. And so just hearing his experience, he's very much more, he said he was, um, trained as an OB and then retrained by mm-hmm. three by, amazing midwives. By midwives. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so awesome. I, I loved that. And um, just a lot of the insights that he had and just seeing like both worlds, like kind of coming together, which we don't get mm-hmm. to see very often. No. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember the exact numbers, but he was like, I haven't done an episiotomy like in years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. like and I can't remember all of the statistics and things like that that he shared but I was just like okay how do we clone 10,000 of you <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, or how, how do we have that be the standard like yeah go train and then right. go train by a midwife so you can right be well versed in all the things <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah I think having I mean we all know the history of OBs and all of that but it would be really great if they would actually change the way they do medical school for OBs and actually have midwives come in and teach the physiology of labor and birth because yeah. like, yeah, we need docs for surgeons. We mm-hmm. need them for right. cesareans. They do save lives, mm-hmm. but too many of them, it's a go-to and <laughs> being trained by a midwife. And I mean, we don't even need to get into the whole idea of being trained in breech birth. Cause that I feel like that's a whole topic on its own. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, if they could be trained by midwives in medical school, imagine how that would just change the entire sphere of mm-hmm. OB care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I remember his whole entire speak. Everybody was just like, we were just totally nodding our head. Like, yes, mm-hmm. yes. Like we totally agree with you. You know, and he talked a lot about too, about how, just how just women's healthcare in general is so messed up in this, mm-hmm. in, in our, meta, in our, you know, in the United States. Um, yeah. And just, yeah, it was, it was kind of fun to see somebody, especially a male OB be just as passionate about it. Um, yeah. you know, and yeah. he strongly believes that doulas are a big part of the, of really helping, um, you know, helping improve birth in the United States. Yeah. So I wrote yeah. down a few of the quotes that he said, um, he said, I don't know anything else that would affect maternal health more than doulas. And I thought that was interesting. Um, and then he said, the less I do, the better the outcome. And I think that mm. that alone, that phrase, like yes. needs to be written on every OB's wall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. they, that's what Definition. they need to learn in medical school. <laughs> yeah. The less I yeah. do, the better the yeah. outcome. Yeah. yeah. My first OB, he, he said that when I interviewed him, um, he was like, my job, he's like, I've been 
catching babies for over 35 years. He was really old. Um, but he was like, my job is to hold up a wall until you need me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And I was like, you're hired. <laughs> like, <laughs> mm-hmm. I knew that much. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I think it's so like, I think most people are the opposite because they think that their doctor needs to be in there doing all oh. the things to keep mm-hmm. them and their baby safe. But it's like mm-hmm. the complete opposite is usually yeah. true. You know, so it's like, how do we, I mean, I guess, again, it goes, we go back to education. Like, how do we mm-hmm. get more people to realize that more is not necessarily better? Yeah. Um, right. There's a time and a place for all of that, but not every mm-hmm. time in every place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like the, um, how, when they started doing the constant, the consistent, uh, fetal monitoring mm-hmm. and how that became like, that actually caused more intervent, unnecessary interventions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It right. didn't actually work to prevent or lower yes. Mm-hmm. The, the mortality rate it actually made things worse and it's yeah like, that's when our c-section rate started going up that's yes, mm-hmm. it, yeah they're yeah. like how does that work yep. Yep. It just, yep. yeah it just shows you that being less involved is usually better mm-hmm. yep. yep i'm feeling that little fire that i get when we start talking about <laughs> topics <laughs> And I'm like, oh, yes. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Got to be careful. We're going to pull out our soapbox. <laughs> I know. I know. Yep. Well, we can get, we can get going. I mean, and then we can, well, okay. So then we can kind of branch into, so we were presenters at DulaCon and that's when we got on our soapbox about education. <laughs> And yes. how and how important education was. So Cheryl and I, um, oh, let's see here. Well, we spoke for about an hour and a half, but then, then we kind of got on the floor and had fun just, you know, talking with everybody and sharing um, what we had learned throughout the week. It was a really great way to kind of end the two days. It really was. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it was really fun for, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we were in the last slot and it just really worked out that way. Yeah, it really yeah. did. Um, but it was fun to just be able to talk for an hour and a half about all the things that we're passionate about. <laughs> um, especially education. That's what our focus was, was how guests, doulas are amazing. We love doulas, obviously. But there's you when you put education and doula support together, like that's when magic happens. Um, because they are fully prepared. They are ready for this birth. And then they have the support of a doula. So, right. Yeah. Right. Well, and then, yeah. So our presentation was called harnessing the power of childbirth education to foster positive birth experiences and improve maternal and infant outcomes. So, so we, we kind of broke down the numbers. Like we talked earlier about how we had the little quiz. And so we had, we had like, um, statistics, and then you had to match which statistic that went to. So there was like epidural use and induction rates and cesarean rates and and things like that. And so, so we started out matching those and then we, and then we, we did the quiz, you know, like who got these right. And, um, and then we broke down. So in the presentation, we talked like, like how, what those numbers are and then how education can improve those numbers. And some of those numbers needed to go down, you know, like epidural use or um, induction rates or things like that. And then some of those numbers needed to go up, like, like doulas, um, you know, people who hire doulas or um, uh, out of hospital birth rates, you know, things like that, you know, so have be having more access. Um, so it was, it was really good. Like I, um, it was really fun. And, and mm-hmm. I, and I think that like you, you guys said earlier, the, like there was a lot of audience participation and a lot of thoughts and ideas thrown out as we were talking. So, um, it was really, it was really good. I was, mm-hmm. I was really happy with it. Yeah. Cheryl and I kind of used that. Like, that was like our first time, like really like publicly speaking. I mean, I, I know you've done a little bit, but yeah. it's been a yeah. while since I've done, you know, an event like that. And yeah. It was good practice. We're excited to do more. We want to do some more of it. Yeah. So yeah, it was yeah. it was really fun. So yeah. 
And I do, like Liana said, like, I like that we were the last slot of the, of the whole thing. And Mm -hmm. so the little activity that we did really kind of like, we talked about what we got out of the whole weekend. And so we kind of went around the room and, and, um, and everybody got to like, just kind of open up about what they, what their favorite part was or what their biggest takeaway was or whatever. And, um, and it was really fun hearing everybody's um, everybody's experience. And then the three guys, like you guys said, um, I like, they were, they were like, I'm so glad you were here. I'm so glad you were here. I'm so glad you were here. You know, and, and, yeah. um, you know cause they all thought they were going to be the only guy there. Um, you know, so there was some solidarity in that yep. little area too. So yeah, just, I think whole, it was the whole weekend was great. It really was. It really was. It's like, by the end of it, we were like, Oh, it's over. But then it's like, we've been talking about it for the last month. You know, every once in a while when we're chatting on Marco Polo, we're like, oh yeah, remember we talked about this or, I mean, it still comes up. Um, and so, yeah. you know, all four of us were something, you know, there was something that stuck out to us. I think that all four of us needed. So it was really good. Yeah, there was. And I loved being with you ladies. It was so fun. Yes. I it's agree. always, <laughs> always fun to be together. Because that was the first time all four of us were together. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. So, yeah. It was a lot Working of fun. remotely is like really nice, but it's also it's like, oh, but we can we be in an office together? <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We would never get any work done. That's true. <laughs> if we were all four in an office together, we would. That's true. No, you know what? Yeah. I think like we one would, of us. It would just be spread out mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 I think one of us at, can be adult enough at any given time to be like, okay, we have got to work, ladies. So <laughs> we would just take turns. Yeah. It's true. It's just like in parenting. Like, yeah. if somebody's in a crummy mood and ideally your partner just, they just know, okay, I'm just going to step in and mm-hmm. you yep. go do something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, so yep, yeah, there's yep. usually somebody who can be like, okay, we gotta, we gotta yeah. focus. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's all good though. All right, well, this was this was a fun, you know, fun to just chat about all these things and mm-hmm. and think about all of them. So I pulled out my notes. Um, I was just looking over them, but um, yeah, I think they're planning to do another one next year. Um, kind of sometime in the fall again, I'm sure. So, um. Maybe we'll be the, at that one again. We'll have to wait and see. So it'd be fun. Yeah. But yeah, if it's, I think definitely as a as a birth professional, like find some of these events that you can go to to really kind of like like relight your fire in you and get you excited and and kind of help grow your passion for this work. Um, and to just like be in a room full of of people, you know. And that's why like we have our retreat and we're already thinking about it. So. Yeah. That's what that's for too. So mm-hmm. all righty. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Um, this was a lot of fun. So be sure that you subscribe. Feel free to write us a review if you want. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.